You're walking in the woods. There's no one around and your phone is dead. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot him. Shia LaBeouf. He's following you, about 30 feet back. He gets down on all fours and breaks into a sprint. He's gaining on you. Shia LaBeouf. You're looking for your car, but you're all turned around. He's almost upon you now, and you can see there's blood on his face. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Go Watch a Movie, episode 113. I'm Kelvin. And I'm Robert. Shine the buff. Uh, (laughs) It's the topic today. We're doing his new film, Honey Boy. But before we get into that, a little bit, or a lot of bit, of entertainment news. What a week it's been. Everyone decided to drop shit all over the weekend. Um, first and foremost, the Golden Globe nominations came out. I'm only going to do uh, four categories here because they're poop ton, of course. Best motion, motion picture drama. Uh, we have 1917, The Irishman, uh, Joker, Marriage Story, and The Two Popes. Um <laughs> The Irishman is a shocker for me. That's a uh, Netflix original, but I'm happy to see it up there. Um, I think The Marriage Story is too. I saw that on Netflix as well. Um, best motion picture. I'm sorry, go ahead. I think I need to up my game because I've only seen one of those movies. Joker? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Two Popes has Anthony Hopkins. I want to see that. Um, but yeah, Best motion picture, music or comedy. Dolomite is my name. Jojo Rabbit. Knives Out. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And Rocket Man. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I guess Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a comedy, I guess. <laughs> okay. I would put that up there with drama, honestly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, Best Actor. In a motion picture drama, Christian Bell, Ford versus Ferrari, Antonio Banderas, Pain and Glory, Adam Driver, Marriage Story, Hakeem Phoenix, uh, The Joker, Jonathan Price, The Two Popes. Um, and yeah, uh, Best Actress in a Motion Picture or Drama, Cynthia Ivaro Harriet, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Marriage story, um, which she could have got one for fucking Jojo Rabbit, too, if you ask me. Um, mm-hmm. Rose, Roanna, Little Woman, Charlize Theron, Bombshell, and Renee Zellweger, Judy. And I gotta tell you, that Judy trailer made me go crazy. That thing looks awesome. Uh, any of those you rooting for? Um, I would like to see them go. Maybe I want. I feel like it would be non-traditional if if Joaquin won for Joker. I mean, I I feel like it's an amazing performance. But I'm just curious if they're going to go more. Well, Ledger won for Joker. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. It'd be it'd be uh, crazy if both Jokers sweep it. <laughs> yeah, then yeah, that would be that would be something. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's the some of the nominations. All of the nominations can be seen at GoWatchMovie.com as we speak. Uh, that's moving us on to Home Alone. You found the original Home Alone movie? That's one of my favorite Christmas movies. Ah, well, then you might not be so happy to know. <laughs> It's technically, quote unquote, being remade, um, rebooted. I guess rebooted is the is the correct term for the Disney Plus str- streaming service. Uh, little little chubby kid, Archie Yates from Jojo Rabbit, the best friend, um, is going to re- take the role of the kid in the movie. But it's a very loose reboot, it seems. Uh, it's only Home Alone in name. Technically, Ellie Kemper is going to be the mom. Rob Delaney, Delaney from Deadpool 2 will be the dad. And it seems like it's going to be kind of a heist film where he steals a priceless heirloom from them and they're trying to get it back as they try and save their house. So very loose <laughs> tones okay, of the movie. Um it sounds like you could just call it something else and be fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know they have to get reach for the nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. Leave well, home that alone, kid alone. Yeah, like, he's uh, 
He's funny. I mean, he's not going to be able to I, like outdo Macaulay Culkin, though. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, Culkin is an underrated actor. Even now, the guy still can pull some stuff off. Um, love him or hate him. Um, to bring us to release dates, the good company Warner Brothers has put out some release dates. The Mortal Kombat reboot has been moved up to January 15th, 2021. Um, this is the big one that I'm excited for. The Matrix 4 is coming out May 21st, 2021. Still a ways away, but mm-hmm. that gives me hope that they're going to do it right. <laughs> um, let's see. And I mean, those are the big ones. We can stop there. Well, The Flash, I guess, um, is now July 1st, 2022, uh, which I don't know, man. That has... <sighs> that could mean a lot of things for what they're doing with the cinematic universe over there. Um, I won't come in too much, but yeah, that is so. That will bring us to let's discuss the showbiz. This one I wanted to talk to you specifically about because it's something I want to get back into, but I tried and it's pretty scarce out there unless you go to like workplaces like Walmart. Um, DVD collecting uh-huh. versus watching everything on streaming services um, and cable, of course. But let's be honest, cable is becoming a streaming service. Uh, ABC, CBS, NBC all have their own streaming apps. Um, is it a dying art? Is it is it going going the way of the wayside? Like, should we be afraid? I think so. I think I don't. I don't feel like as many people. I see a lot of like. I don't want to. I don't necessarily consider myself an old timer, but maybe I am in, in spirit. But I see a lot of old timers still, you know, mm-hmm. doing that thing. But yeah, I don't. I don't think the kids are quite as much. I, I, I just recently saw that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood has like a spectacular still 4K still book mm-hmm. edition out where the DVDs uh, or the Blu-rays, I'm assuming, look like uh, film reels. Mm-hmm. Um, very like it, I've seen a lot of still books and people seem to be going that route to, I guess, entice people more. Um, but yeah, the still the 4K still books are something I want to dive into and start collecting myself, especially after I saw that. I've seen a couple others, and then also the uh, big elaborate like the Die Hard series you can get in the uh, what's the name of the building the Yamato Yuma- Yuma- building, like it looks Yaka- like a big old Yaka- case. Tomi. Yeah, Yakutomi yeah. uh, Towers. You can get it like a mm. case that looks like that, full of the DVDs. Those are, those are those are cool, but I feel like they're almost like. They need. They're trying to sell them like the movie so bad that they have to come up with all these crazy ideas when the movie should speak for itself. Like I, like I, I mean, it's fine, but I just, I personally, I just want a hard copy of the thing so I can watch the movie. I mean, I don't really need a a fancy, even though I do have a couple fancy things. But I think it's also a needed gimmick sometimes because it's dying. Like, how are we going to get them? to buy these things anymore, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, I agree with you. I do just want to own the movie and watch the movie. Um, because go watch the movie, you know, but, <laughs> I but mean, they could, they could start doing stuff like, you know, the, the ex- I actually have movie extras or, you know, different, you know, versions of the film and that they only release on, you know, this, that might, you know, entice more people. And that, that is something that, uh, I think, DVDs and Blu-rays and 4K films still have a one-up on streaming mm-hmm. services about because a lot of times there you can't really find the extras. Netflix has if you keep scrolling down past the movie, it has a couple, you know, here and there, but like commentaries, like mm-hmm. you said, alternate endings, um, different complete different versions of the movie. Like, yeah, that those things I think are still only found on DVDs, which I I enjoy. Well, I will I will sit and watch a commentary just like I will a movie. You know? mm-hmm. um, it's basically the OG podcast, honestly, <laughs> with, right. vis- with visuals. But yeah, I don't know. Just something I want to bring up because I think they're needed, um, especially since I'm 
going to try and get back into it. Yeah, and there's a lot of older movies, like maybe not like old, old, but like slightly older movies that have kind of been lost. Like they're really hard to get on DVD now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, I'm not on a lot of streaming services, so I don't know if they're available there. I have looked, you know, found stuff on YouTube and whatnot. But I mean, there's just so much out there. And I just feel like if I have a hard copy of it, I've always got it. Yeah. It's always there, unless you know, your house burns down or something. But like you, you've always got it. Doesn't matter if your internet stops working because somebody knocks down a pole across the street or whatever. <laughs> or you, you still go get, broke and can't yeah, afford all the streaming services. You still got that hard copy. <laughs> your movies are always going to be right there. Agreed. Agreed. That's a good damn good point. Damn good point. Because I've had blackouts before where you know, like, fuck. Now what? <laughs> 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 I'm gonna be like Jane Austen and read a candle by book, a book by candlelight. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's last discussed the showbiz, and that will bring us to tra- trailers. This is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> yeah. You think we picked the same movie again this time? I don't know, man. There's so you, many that came I out. I know there's so many good trailers. I'm going to let you go first. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to do a 180, I think. And because uh, I'm going to say one of the ones I think I would have picked and you might pick for mm-hmm. trailer zones next month. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Free Guy. Oh, okay, we did pick. <laughs> you, did you pick free guy? It's okay. <laughs> Son of a bitch, <laughs> get out of my head. Um, free guy, Ryan Reynolds, um, being Ryan Reynolds, but in a new setting. Um, basically, this is he is inside a video game. It's kind of wrecking Ralph, but he's inside of a video game uh, and doesn't realize it until he, he, he lives his life normal. Uh, he's just one of the, I guess, pedestrians of the video game where all this action and adventure is going on around him. Like in, in a bank robbery, he has a discussion with a uh, little rail and it's f- funny. And uh, he realizes, Hey, I'm going to take action today. And he actually stops one of these bad guys picks up the glasses and realizes, oh my God, everything is action. Oh, I can see everything clear now. Uh, the titles of things, characters, villains, you know, and yeah, it it uh, looks fun. Looks like a, a buttload of fun to me. It's, it's, it's it, does, it, does look, <laughs> it does look fun, but doesn't it look like something we've already seen before? Yes. Yes, it does. It seems way too familiar. That's kind of I why I wanted it. Um, yeah. Like last action hero rings a mm-hmm. bell, yep. um, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks like it kind of splices in. What was the movie with the uh, the computer? Everybody was an alien, which you had to put the sunglasses on to be able to see him. See him. Uh, like they, they live. Yeah. yeah, they. I mean, it reminds me of that a little bit in a way. It kind of reminds me of Ready Player One in a way a little bit. I kind of see. Yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me of Deadpool just because you know Ryan's in it and he just kind of always, Ryan. yeah, he's always being himself. So it just feels like I've seen this movie before, even though I'll, I still want to watch it. I'm not super excited for it because I feel like they're just redoing something. I feel like I've seen this, but I haven't. It's weird. I'm super excited to see the uh, press roll out to see if he goes as hard as he does with Deadpool. For I don't, this. I don't, yeah, I don't think they should. I think Deadpool has too much of a cult following to, I mean, I think it deserves it for that. But with this one, I think it's just, just it, another another movie. And it fits uh, Deadpool's character of breaking the fourth wall, seeing him in everything, you know? Right. So yeah, I see your point. What about you, sir? Sorry about that. Still That's yours? okay. I, I got a secondary. Uh, hopefully it's not the one you wanted to do later but uh i'm gonna go with wonder woman 2 oh yep <laughs> so it's it's i think i don't first of all you already know me in the 80s mm-hmm. so i'm already in just because it's, <laughs> it's the 80s i love the 80s so and it, i'm kind of excited to see how the guy got killed in the first one sorry spoilers comes mm-hmm. back in the second i mean that's i mean a little something to be excited about but it just looks like just more 
you know, one up in Power Woman. Yeah, just one more Wonder Woman. Like, how can you not want more Wonder Woman? It does look a little funky in some spots when she's like using her. She uses her rope a lot more in this one, which they didn't do in the last one. I, I wonder. Thought that they only got people to tell the truth. Yeah, but, but I feel like they're doing it because they're like, well, they didn't use it in the first one enough, so they got to use it in the you know. So they're overdoing it almost because she's like web slinging through lightning from fucking <laughs> lightning bolts. I was almost like, I'm out. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> even even though that looks badass, I mean that looks pretty sweet and that's a crazy idea but still I mean I feel yeah, like what is it like what are you guys a little much but kind of I, new lore? Uh, I thought she could fly she used yeah. to have an invisible jet yeah which <laughs> we're good that's cool uh, we're gonna one up the invisible jet that's not cool enough we're but gonna holy shit like, man like what what how <laughs> I guess Still we didn't discover that she was a goddess mm-hmm. last movie, so yeah, I guess that fits. I How guess. can you not want to watch this movie after seeing the trailer? It just looks fun. Yeah, it's it's, it's super it's superheroes. It's fun. It's Wonder Woman. I, I mean, how can you go wrong? It's gonna be hard for them to top the last one though, because it was their biggest is their biggest. Well, I mean, other than the Joker, uh, biggest to date. So don't forget about old Aquaman. He didn't do too bad. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, but uh, yeah, that will take us to um, Honey Boy. Yeah. Watch spot if you would not mind. When 12 year old Otis begins to find success as a television star, his abusive, alcoholic father returns and takes over as his guardian, and their contentious relationship is followed over a decade. It stars Shia LaBeouf, Lucas Hedges, and Noah Duke. It was directed by Alma Herrell. Thank you, Watchbot. Uh, if you're like me and you have some daddy issues, um, well, this one, this one got to you, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, man. And this is written and directed by Mr. Shy. Well, I'm sorry, written yes. and starring Shia LaBeouf, mm-hmm. um, co-starring, I should say, cause he has some very talented, uh, co-stars, uh, playing his younger and slightly older self. Um, wow. This is, I mean, this one, this one touched me. This one put on the heartstrings of old cold-hearted Kelvin. Um, what do you think, sir? It, right on. You said it. I mean, it <laughs> it tugs on them. It's uh, for me. I don't I don't have the daddy issues. However, it was extremely. I just have issues, <laughs> but <laughs> it was extremely. Like I felt uncomfortable watching it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that was purposeful, but it was almost like I shouldn't have been watching it. Like it was peeking into somebody's world. That you know that the normally in my old fashioned self is kept private, and you're you're thrown right in there to see all the the you know the hurt and the you know attempts at healing and all the weirdness and the craziness, and then you're just like I kind of know that guy, I know that guy because I met somebody like him. That must be what their house is like because you know it's just it's weird. So and not to say that it's bad. It's just mm-hmm. it's so it did it so perfectly to make you basically uncomfortable. If if you know that was. Uh, we, you know, I don't know if they really meant for that to be the effect, but that's the way it made me feel. Do you feel like this is him just saying, "Look, I'm not fucking crazy," you know? This is this is what I was raised with. This is my life. I think I think there's multiple takes on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think uh, he wanted to. I think he wanted to just do some self therapy and let people know like who he is. And I mean that. I mean that basically, you know, clears it up. You can't argue with what you saw but at the same time I, I can I can see people out there going oh you know boohoo you you're famous you can you're super talented you know do I really need this this sob story and I would say yeah because it 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 shows you like how how deep the rabbit hole goes like how much yeah. you had to go through to become what you are uh, and again I think we mentioned it from the trailer like I love the line like you know I don't drink because of my dad I work because of him, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. so, I mean, there's just, there's so much depth in it and just heart and then honesty. You can't, you can't go wrong when you get that, even if it makes you uncomfortable watching it. Yeah. And he does an amazing job at going there. Mm-hmm. He's not pulling any punches. He's not, um, he, he tells the story that he wanted to tell in this and it, Jesus. Uh, but let's start with 
Um, Lucas Hedges, Otis, uh, 22 year old Otis. Um, I love the I love the way they open this film. I love the way they uh, dive into to. Um, this is his life. This is this is his experience because I'm assuming that's Transformers, uh, you know, quote unquote. We we're sitting there and we see him getting tugged and just basically used and just just existing. It seems you know, like not not living it like he should, like someone should be who's starring in one of the highest grossing action films ever, but just kind of this there and waiting for that 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 to leave so that he can get a different kind of escape alcohol, Mm. you know, (laughs) which is like, ah, it it just touches you. What do you think of, uh, of Otis 22 year old Otis? Yeah. I mean, it definitely worked the way they opened the the film. Uh, I wish they would have done more going back and forth with young Otis and and old Otis or whatever age, Mm -hmm. young, the young, young Otis and the, just the regular Otis. But outside of that, I think he did a a great job of, of depicting what, it's it's hard to separate it from shy, you know, Shia LaBeouf because you know, it's supposed to be him. So you're, you're thinking of this other character, but you know, it's really supposed to be, Oh yeah, above, that ain't a fucking Otis. That's Shia. Yeah. That's (laughs) so, I mean, yeah, I think, and he even kind of sounded like him in a couple, He did. So, because Shia has like this kind of, it's like a, a a a tough boy accent, but at the same time a country accent kind of mm-hmm. comes in there, you know. Yeah, it's. Uh, do you did you get the sense of of him not like truly enjoying his life at that point? At that point, yeah. I would say yes. I don't think he was doing what he wanted to be doing. Exactly. I mean, he, I think he wanted to be acting. He wanted to be, he wanted to make money from it. Obviously, if, if, if you're doing it for a living, but I don't think he was enjo- maybe enjoying the subject matter. Yeah. So much. I think which, maybe which he is wanted. Evident and what he did after the Transformer movies, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, he kind of took a very hard left turn and started doing what people would call artsy, but independent films. Well, it's because and- he knows he's. I mean. He, there's something to be said about being cocky and overconfident, you know, mm-hmm. something people can take that the wrong way, but he, he is good at what he does. Very. So I think he wanted to have subject matter that was more fitting to his, what he thought he was his skill level. Mm-hmm. And which would, you know, of course makes total sense. And I have to agree with him. I, I, I think I said on here, he's one of the greatest actors of our age. Um, the kid is, he has the chops. He can go there or he can be, the fucking even Stevens goofball, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, everyone laughs at. But clearly, as we'll, when we get to his him playing his father, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll talk about. But twelve year old Otis Noah, uh, we joined him in the even Stevens days. Um, I gotta tell you, the just the fact that this kid had to. Uh, was pay was getting sufficient money because Disney's not slouching when they're paying you, but um, and I'm talking real shy at this point. Um, getting sufficient money, but choosing to say screw that, uh, I, I'm going to live with my father because I want to get to know him because I know he's going to push me because he has that edge. Um, in a shitty motel. You know, mm-hmm. but just because I want to be my dad, where I know I could be living the life right now, I know I don't have to be putting up with this shit. But yeah, it's it's ah, oh, it just gets me. And this kid Noah Jupe, I think it's pronounced, did amazing, just mm-hmm. fan fucking tastic. Uh, what do you think of this one? Yep, there's nothing wrong with his performance. It was very very believable. Like I said, it was super real. Like it always makes you uncomfortable to see the kid go through what he has to go through, and he I, he, he did it perfectly. I can't look at young Shia LaBeouf the same way anymore. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you, Cause you want, you want to laugh at him. And then he's doing those things and, and, and we skipped over like the montage of 22 year old Otis running like 
through all of these movie scenes, mm. which like holes and and all, it's just brilliant, brilliant, brilliantly done, brilliantly writ- written. And then we flash to Otis doing, yeah, um, the the life he chose to live just to get close to his dad is it, one of the things that is mind blowing to me. Is that something you would sacrifice? Like, yeah, as a kid, a twelve year old kid, kid, would you think have that a, much? No gumption, you know. <laughs> I don't think I, would, I was that aware as a kid, to, like right? to be able to have that make that kind of a decision yeah to realize what i was doing or you know not doing i don't know i just don't see it i, I don't either like they don't... have to grow they grow up fast when they're in the business i think yeah they're too fast and that's mm-hmm. kind of a problem with child stars obviously we always see child child, child stars <laughs> fall <laughs> off the <laughs> just yeah so yeah um yeah they either disappear or we see them in the news for the wrong reasons mm-hmm that's ridiculous. And it's usually uh, because they want attention. Mm-hmm. And they just can't cut it on film anymore, so they and give it the other way they know how. Yep, and Hollywood and the public are fickle. I mean, they'll love you for a second, but then you grow up, and it's not the same. Yeah. And he's been lucky. Like, he could still be in top A-listed movies if he wanted to. Uh, if... Uh, he didn't burn some bridges, I guess, as well. Right. But <laughs> he's gonna, you know, I think he's gonna keep going. He's gonna keep making movies, and people are gonna. But, but his way, which is what I yep. love, and I think people are gonna take note. I think he's gonna be in some big budget ones here, you know, later on in his life, just to just to do something different other than the same old, you know, mind breaking the emotional movies that he's been doing. So I think yeah. I think he's gonna be up there again. Can you imagine the? Let's get to Shia uh, playing his dad, James Lort. Uh, can you imagine going home every day after reliving that stuff, like and and embodying it, like after work? You you're not gonna just go home and sit down and play some games. You're gonna like, mm-hmm. just unwinding, like playing a seal killer. Yeah, you know, playing a, a fucking I don't know murderer, whatever. But going back to those those moments in your life that molded shaped you and changed you like like clearly they did for him has to be mind breaking man <laughs> yeah i think we i think we all go back and, and look at that stuff but he's just doing it in front of everybody and then like and, making and a movie out of it, it. <laughs> yeah so i think it was more therapeutic for him than anything to be able to like maybe even get to understand through pretending to be you know somebody like his mm-hmm. dad you know how his dad was or or you know to, not to normalize any of it but to at least understand it so that he could just put it you know behind him I just kind of feel that way about it yeah I can see that I can see that um what what what'd you think of his incarnation of his father um it's pretty mind blowing I mean at first I was like why can't he play his younger self because he, he could pull it off he could play yeah. a younger version and an older version but I see how he wanted to concentrate on just that it makes mm-hmm. sense and and how it, like it would have broke I think broke the illusion yeah and it was so mind mind blowing to see him playing that character because mm-hmm. it's kind of almost like the opposite well, not necessarily, necessarily the opposite but so much meaner than like you know the last version of him that we saw in film it's so it's like yeah, there's like that contra- yeah there's that, <laughs> that contrast of basically I mean I don't know how much like goodness I saw in the character like the man you know what I mean yeah honestly, it, was, like, it was really hard to pick out qualities about him that I liked so I was trying I to know. find his motives because it, it, it did not like at first you think oh he's just here to milk the kid you mm-hmm. know for everything that but that I don't think that was his motivation I don't think he necessarily wanted to fucking milk the kid for money because like I said I think they could have been staying in a much nicer place <laughs> yeah I think yeah I'm not sure why they were staying the way they were staying in the way they were just unless he was just living off of what he was getting from his kid but I don't learn, I don't really understand why he picked that spot yeah. but I, I I think part of his motivation was just living through his son because he was the son was getting the success that he probably he was wanting mm-hmm. but and but even though he had the instincts like they mentioned in the movie for it yeah. it just wasn't paying off for him so being able to like maybe slightly live vicariously through his son was part of maybe part of a lot of it I don't know that for sure but I'm just making that that's what I got from the movie yeah I mean yeah I, I noticed that too because he, he pointed out a few times He, you know you, you're getting that oh man you have everything I want you know like you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're doing this this and this um, but at the same time the kids like dude 
you you don't understand. I don't, I'm, I'm just trying to be like you. Is this what you want, really? And mm-hmm. then that's when that's when young Shy Otis bu- bucked up. He's like, oh, well, now I I'm kind of like my dad because he wants the you know wants what I have and. Good Lord, man. That's just some amazing writing in this movie. Um, and then for him to tell the tale of, I, I didn't realize, I knew two times he uh, had some DUI issues. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I didn't realize the third time. And I don't know how much of this is full on truth right. and, and what's fabricated. But. I'm sure there were some embellishments, embellishments made for the movie. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I feel like the heart of it is, is probably right on. And, and uh, what do you think of story wise? Story wise, there's that's probably my only complaint. I mean, there was some dreamlike moments in it, yeah, like sure. like like when he was being pulled back with the with the rope in the beginning, and then they mm-hmm. they mirrored that with the smaller with the smaller version of himself. Mm-hmm. I wish they did something like that more, like going from the young to the the I guess uh, now aged, you know. Mm-hmm. Otis. I wanted to see them kind of like maybe when he was upset in the uh, office doing his little, uh, you know, rehab and he slammed the wall or something or snapped a rubber band. Maybe that flashed to like the kid again doing something similar or something like that. I just wanted to see more going back and forth to make it make the whole movie seem more dreamlike as opposed to just having these moments that were dreamlike Mm -hmm. and then just being like peeking your head through somebody's window watching like a dysfunctional family. I wanted more dreamlikeness maybe. So maybe it wasn't so harsh. Or, yeah. You know, you know what I mean. I don't know. <laughs> it, oh, oh man, talk about harsh. To to have to be a child of twelve, and basically your best friend is a prostitute. <laughs> That you feel like just for her time and a, and, and a bit of emotion and a bit of of caring and soft touches, and not in a not in an inappropriate way, but soft, mm. so just loving way, you got to pay her. Yeah, I don't even think she got that when she got paid. She didn't. That's, she was like looking at it like, what neck is this for? And he, yeah. because he, that's the way he was thinking you had to be. You yeah. had to pay for that. He was he's been doing it for yeah. fucking yeah. father. <laughs> like, yeah, he didn't get it. And plus, he, he probably knew what she was doing, you know, yeah. across the street. So he just, he didn't understand like that it's it's supposed to be mutually free. It's just mm-hmm. supposed to, you know, but she yeah. wants to be, she wanted to be there. She wanted to love this child because she, she saw what he was going through and she was going through kind of a similar, yeah. you know. And I, and I like, I cringed at a couple moments because I was thinking, is this, is he going to tell us that he was, you know, sexually molested or something? by a young woman and but, but it wasn't it was just you know somebody being like compassionate to somebody else who was probably that both of them were probably hurting I mean she yes. didn't have the easiest life either but yeah it was just two people showing each other a little bit of it's okay yeah yeah and I, I, I wanted them to dive deeper into the mother issue the mother not issue but the mother situation um, I did, that the scene the, when you said that the scene when he's like Speaking, he's the like puppet. He's, he's a walkie-talkie yeah. Yeah. between the two parents was just ridiculous. Like I felt so bad, like that yeah. somebody would have to do. Like, how do you do that to your kid? How's an adult you don't know? If he had to go through that for real, like Shia, you you put all the paper bags on your head you want, <laughs> and you're right, I'm not famous because damn man, like that's the father's too fucking prideful at that moment to take the phone from the kid and, and, and say, hey, you don't need to do this, you know, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, and then the mom, uh, well, uh, what was going through her? Cause at first you, you're thinking she's the same one, but clearly she's, she's asking, she asked him to parrot this shit, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know how she, how she did that. Knowing, I mean, if the story, I mean, I don't want to say any of this is not true, but she had to jump from a moving car to stop him from assaulting her. Then, like, how do you then let your kid? It seems like cause she, because she also called him the love of her life, and that's why I wanted to dive, wanted them to dive a little bit deeper into that situation, because, because at, at the same time, he he admitted to going too far with her mm-hmm. in that meeting. So I don't know at, at some point were they mutual? What did he, did he was Shia a, 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 a product of rape, you know, or no, I think he said he did everything, but okay. So, so at one point then they, they, they were in love and Shia was a product of that. Then at some point, <laughs> that's what I'm assuming. It's hard to, 
We don't know the man's story or the yeah. or this character character story that he created. I, that's what I wanted to dive deeper in, though, because like that, I, I wanted to understand what was going on there exactly. Um, but for because because I mean, if it maybe they had a passion at night and he wanted more or was high and she didn't want it at the time. And then that's when she decided to jump. Cause you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's insane. And it's a movie you have to see to understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, it is weird how he kind of glazed over her and mainly concentrated on the dad. Yeah. But I, I mean, but if, once you see the dad, I mean, how can you not, that's like a dominating force in your life. So how, I mean, she was probably normal compared to, compared yeah. to that so maybe that's why there's not as much attention spent on her mm. and and what was his name ted tom tom yeah the guy i didn't get that character so much like i understand he was, he was a, a big brother i i got that part but then yeah. it was like i don't know it just seemed it seemed weird like your dad's right there but you got a big brother and that, and that's the issue that, that your dad hasn't met yeah um <sighs> And, and, and that's another thing because I guess apparently the mom set that up, um, and maybe because she knew maybe she knew that the father wouldn't give him that, yeah, and she I, wanted him to have that. She wanted him to have someone to go to baseball games with. And, I, and I not, yeah, I definitely understand having that positive, you know, influence. Yeah. But at the same time, that's that's completely an evil slap towards the the dad. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so I can understand why the dad freaked out and had that, you know, that outburst. But yeah. I mean, maybe he went took it a little bit too far. But oh, I don't definitely. know. <laughs> ah, man. Um, good, good scenes, good stuff. Even though it's hard to watch, it's still it's so it's uh it's you can't turn away. It's like a car. It's a car crash. Yeah, can't, can't look away. I, my my only issue with this film is the ending. I, I is it because they went back to the dreamlike or because of the the way they just the it? soprano style meh, disappear fade to black. <laughs> it went too dreamlike. I think they should have did that more sporadically throughout the movie because it made. Like, cause it starts that way and it ends that way, but then everything in the middle is just so just raw and harsh. I think if they had spliced in a little more dreaminess somehow to make it more dreamily fluid, I don't know yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> it maybe would have <laughs> it would have worked for me more. But I just feel, and maybe they didn't want to do that. Maybe they wanted it to be as harsh and as angry as possible in the middle. Mm-hmm. But it just yeah. It was like a. a- I almost said Oreo, but Oreo is good in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> this was Oreo oops. Yep, Oreo oops. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, overall thoughts. I mean, overall, go watch or not for you, sir. Uh, absolutely go watch. I mean, I'm not saying that this is the best movie of the year, <laughs> but I mean, it's pretty dang enjoyable to watch and it's different from other stuff that you've probably seen this year. So it's, it's definitely worth if you, if, and if you're, if you're sick of the same old thing, I mean, give this movie a try. Agreed. Uh, go watch from me, uh, Shia and the, uh, Get kid who played young Shia definitely deserve rewards. Um, and middle-aged Shia is almost there. Uh, Lucas, uh, for me, it was just everybody had stellar acting. This story is intriguing. You don't want to look away. You do, but you don't because mm-hmm. you're afraid that you might miss this next um, important piece of information. Uh, yeah, just just fantastic. Go definitely go watch if you can find it. Uh, it's very sparse. <laughs> Yeah. For for me, this movie just made me want to see what Shia LaBeouf is going to do in the future. I almost want to see an old Shia LaBeouf, like old, yeah. old, like, you know what I mean? Like Liam Neeson age now, mm. like making movies. Cause I can't wait to see what, what kind of performances he's going to be able to pull I off. I think he's going to, I think he's going to go Clint Eastwood. Uh, I think he'll, he'll, you know, in and out, uh, never, never going straight scraping like crazy big budget again. I think, but like, cause, cause Clint Eastwood had some blockbusters, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at, at early on, he did like the, oh, my partner is a monkey, you know, <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> but then he, he, he went there, um, but not that crazy out there. You know, he, he got, he did the couch, the, the, the everyday person movies, right. but then at the same time, he was directing and making these heartfelt films. I, I kind of see, 
started doing that. I feel like he's still pushing to. I mean, I, I know he's already crafted his 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 skills mm -hmm. to a pretty fine point there, but I still feel like he's still trying to get better. Yes. So I mean, just knowing that, and then realizing he's still a young man, that we still have a whole future of movies to watch from him. It's it's pretty exciting to see. Yeah. I feel that way also about like Jake Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've at the, when he was younger, yeah, he was I mean, he was good, mm -hmm. but now seeing you know how much he's pushing on some of his roles, he it's just like better. it's just holy crap! Like you, you're not stopping. You're just going to continue to you know improve and and get better and make better movies. So I feel the same way about Shia, Shia LaBeouf. For sure. Um, Rotten Tomatoes, ninety three percent, ninety two percent. That's not very many views of the, of either, but uh, damn, it's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and I mean, yeah, yeah. What, what else can you say about it? Just I guess go watch it, experience it for yourself. It's different. Um, you did mention best movie of the year. It's getting that close to that time. Um, the year is about to be over here soon. We only have a few more episodes this year. And I want you to start thinking, man. And I'm, you people out there, too. What was your favorite movie of the year? Uh, because our last episode of the year, we will announce ours. And we want to hear from yours and talk about yours as well on that episode. So uh, Mine's probably going to be a shocker because I kind of already have an idea. Oh, man. And you're not going to be like, this. you're going to be like, huh? I'll be like, yeah. I don't have to explain myself when I'm horrible at doing that. Oh, so, man. <laughs> look forward to that. I am. <laughs> But yeah, I will do the same. I'll come up with one. But yeah, that's something we want to do with you guys to get you guys involved. Um, send those to the email. Go watch a movie at yahoo.com. Post them on Twitter. Um, put them on Facebook or Instagram. We just want to know from you guys as well. Um, and that is the episode for today where you can find us. You can find us at GoWatchMovie.com. The trailers are up there. All the entertainment news is up there. The podcast is there. Um, it's a one-stop shop for all things entertainment. What more do you need to say other than that? Um, you can find the podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple, uh, Stitcher, anywhere a podcast can be found. Uh, that's everything for today. And I, I, I almost did, but I didn't cry this episode. I was sure I was gonna. <laughs> I'm Kelvin. And I'm Robert. Go watch a movie. Wait, he isn't dead. Shine, surprise. There's a gun to your head. And death in his eyes. But you can do jujitsu. Fight and slip through the stars shine above. His head topples to the floor, expressionless. You fall to your knees and catch your breath. You're finally safe from Shia LaBeouf.